Brother Swaggart, what did you mean by the term unique? After I answer this, I propose, if it's not out of order, that we make this the last question. We've been here two and a half hours. Oh, I'm sorry. Very good. Fine. Um, they're paying him by the hour. They're not paying me at all. <laughs> but I got $100, though. <laughs> in the Greek translation, in the, let me change it, in the original Greek, the word unique simply meaning different than any that there had ever been. There has never been one like the Son of God. He's unique. And there has never been one like Mary that produced the Son of God, as he eloquently explained just a moment ago. It just simply means there was never one before him like that. There will never be one after him like that. He was unique as God's own Son manifest in the flesh. And incidentally, we Christians don't believe in three gods. We don't believe that God is married and lives in an apartment in heaven and has a bunch of children. We don't believe and teach such foolishness as that. We believe that out of love, God Almighty con condescended to come down here on this planet and live among men and to walk and talk among men and in human form, the incarnation, to die on Calvary's cross as the perfect sin offering for mankind. Man helpless to save himself. And he did just that. And he told the people, you kill this body, and in three days, I will raise it up again. Once again, he was unique in that. He was unique in, his, in the prophecies. He was unique in his birth. He was unique in his life. He was unique in his miracles. He was unique in his ministry. He was unique in his death. He was unique in his resurrection. He was unique in his ascension. And when he comes back, he will be unique in his coming again. You have to fulfill the conditions. Now, there is a condition attached to you visiting Mecca. And that condition is that you declare with your lips, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. <laughs> the meaning is, the meaning is that I believe that there is but one God, not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, not Jesus, that God. I believe in the one and only God, Allah, which is his name. And that Muhammad is the last and final messenger of God. You feel that condition, you are welcome to come to Mecca. Mr. Swaggart. Mr. Swaggart, according to your argument, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is necessary for salvation. Can we then surmise that anyone who uses Bible or another Bible will burn in hell, such as Muslims, Buddhists, Catholics, Jews, etc.? I have never said, never believed that you have to believe in the King James Version to be saved. That's foolishness. That's silly. And before I answer the question, if you won't let me come to Mecca, let me go on television over there. <laughs> Mr. Dedock mentioned the Douay version of the Bible. Sir, we do believe in the Douay version of the Bible. Translation, let's put it that way. We do not accept those spurious books that were mentioned but we do believe in the Douay translation. We feel it's a good translation. No one has to believe in a particular translation of the Bible to be saved. You do have to believe in the Word of God to be saved. And once again, the Word of God says there is none other name under heaven. It also tells us that we are saved by faith. 
not by works, lest any man should boast. We're saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't care where that word is. If the word of God, do you have a Quran over there, sir? Could I? I mean, I was hoping he brought one. <laughs> okay. Any word of God that's in this book, if you believe it, pertaining to salvation, you will be saved. You follow what I'm saying? If the word of God pertaining to salvation, pertaining to being redeemed, pertaining to being saved, if it's written on the side of a wall somewhere, to be frank with you, it's written on our hearts. That's what the Bible tells us. You can memorize this book and worship it, and it won't save you. It has no power to save you. But the Word of God, if adhered to, and that means accepting Jesus Christ as one's own personal Savior. If that is in the Quran, you can be saved. Mr. Didak, how does the Muslim account for different versions of the Quran? Does this make all of the versions um, lies as you claim the Bible is? I repeat, there is no such thing as different versions of the Quran. I said there are translations. Yours are versions. Brother Swaggart, in the previous question he ans uh, answered, he said, look, there are seven spurious books in the Dua version. Seven spurious means which he rejects. So it's a version. There are seven books out of this which he is not prepared to accept as the word of God. Whereas every Quran in the world translated as a, it is God's word, translated. And you have a choice of words, but they are not versions. This is a version. This is a version. Chunks and chunks are thrown out from what is in here. Different version. I hope you understand my English. You know, I don't know how, how, how simpler I can put it to you. That the things are varying. What is in here? Seven books? Not in here. What is in here is not in there. What is in here is taken out from there again. Can you see? It's a version. I hope. I don't know. Reverend. Jimmy Swaggart, what is Trinity? We believe the Word of God teaches that there is one God, not 2, 5, 10, 12, 15, one God, manifest in three persons, three different personalities. We believe there is a Heavenly Father. We believe there is God the Son. And we believe the Holy Ghost, as Mr. D. Dot mentioned, that came upon Mary, is also God. They are indivisible, meaning they agree perfectly. They are one in unity. They never disagree. They never have disagreed. We believe that when you get to heaven, if you get there, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will be seated, according to the Word of God, by the right hand of the Father. And 